In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a Nikkor non-AI lens and convert it so that it'll work on a modern camera. The lens I'm going to be converting is a 50 millimeter f2. Get it out of the way so the camera will focus on it. And the mount looks like this. Solid and it sticks out. Whereas when you compare to this 50 millimeter 1.8 e, there are notches cut out that will display metering information through the viewfinder on the camera. The problem comes in is where you take a look at D750. Right there, there's a small little tab, and that's used to display the aperture information um, into the viewfinder when you have a non CPU contacted lens. Older cameras used a little pin right there that would sit right in the little notch on the lens and then when the aperture changed we move the little tab around. As I move the aperture ring so in order to convert the lens you're going to need to remove the aperture ring and then you need to grind down the ring just a little bit. So here is a uh, 50 millimeter 1.4 and you can see where I have ground down the material. I've gone ahead and I've removed all the other cameras and lenses that I had in the area. There's going to be little metal bits um, flying around so anything that you wouldn't want them to be in such as a lens or a camera it's a good idea to remove from the area. Now the most difficult part is to remove the screws on the back of this plate that holds the aperture ring into place. Um, this is my third lens that I'm converting. The previous two I've had difficulties removing the screws. My advice would be to have lots of screwdrivers to try. Um, several of these are very similar in size, but they just didn't get in the screw perfectly and provide the right leverage to break the um, thread locker that's on the back of all the screws. So I would go through and try a bunch of different screwdrivers, and for this lens, this cheap screwdriver that I think I got um, for replacing my cell phone battery ended up working. You don't want to strip any of these screws. So this one fits perfectly well in and I've already um, broken the thread lock. So I'm going to drop these into the uh, rear cap. On the uh, 50 millimeter F1.4, this screw right here had a spring attached to it that um, would provide some tension on the um, bayonet. And I removed it and that was problematic. So, uh, and then on the uh, 135 uh, Nikkor QC, there was no spring um, tension. So all five had to be removed. So there's the notch here, there's the bayonet. This screw right here, my advice would be to remove it last. Not sure which lenses needs to be removed on or not. I think this one needs to be removed. I'm going to listen because on the 1.4 uh, 50 millimeter, I could hear the spring tension leaving and the screw was longer. This is the same length as the rest of them. Um, and then it pops out. Uh, and there is the spring I was talking about. On this lens, it's not hooked up to a um, screw. I want to be very careful not to damage that or remove it. And once that's done, you can see the inside of the lens. I'm going to check. Some of them have a screw around the aperture ring that uh, holds it into place. This one doesn't. The aperture ring easily comes off. So now I'm going to take off this piece right here. Being very careful not to lose those tiny screws. So now we have the aperture ring. I'm going to take the lens and the cap with all the screws and everything out of the area. Now that I have the lens out of the area, I'm going to use a uh, metal file to make a notch. Now you want to make sure to notch 
the side opposite the numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the file and I'm going to use the edge very carefully line up and start making a notch. Don't need to go past the the screw holes. So that should be good. And now I'm going to go over here and uh, just pass the two and notch it again, and that'll give me the air access to the area that I want to um, grind away with the uh, Dremel. I didn't do it correctly. I placed the notch in the wrong spot. I'm pretty sure that you can see this gap right here. I would aim for right there to pass right here on the aperture ring because it needs to line up with the 11 somewhere right there through. So I'm pretty sure that denotes where it needs to be ground down to fit correctly. I'm going to wear earplugs and safety goggles and I just have a Dremel with just a uh, abrasive bit on it that's pretty worn out but I think it'll be fine. What I found works best is to line it up so that the Dremel is kind of in line with it instead of going at it the rounded side. This way you can get a nice square grind in there and that will prevent the um, little notches that were filed down from getting rounded with these square so that the camera shows the correct aperture setting. So I have my earplugs in and the goggles on. Let's get to grinding. And then I'm going to go back over with the file, the side of the file to make it nice and even. And there's little metal that's all, all in there and I can feel that they're on my hand and could feel a few hitting my face, so back with the file. There we go. You can see the little notch that's been cut out, and, but there's little metal bits all over the aperture ring. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to wash it with some soap and water and then take a paper towel and rub the inside and then rinse it off again and take the paper a different paper towel and rub it again just to make sure that all the little metal bits um, are gone. So I've got everything laid out to reassemble the lens. So I'm going to make sure that it's completely dry before I reassemble it. So I'm going to wipe it clean. I'm going to take some compressed air and blow it. I think I've got everything out. So to get the aperture ring to line up correctly. So there's a notch, small notch on the inside, and there's this little pin here. So this notch is going to have to line up on this pin. And then to test, I'm going to turn it, lines up with 2, lines up with 16. So I know that the aperture ring is installed correctly. And then we're going to have to put the back plate back on. There's a small tab right over there. I'm not sure how well it is going to show up on the camera. Small tab right there and that's going to fit in the middle of this. So I go and I slide that into place and then rotate all five screw holes line up. Then I'm going to take screws Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm going to take both lens caps off and make sure that the aperture ring is adjusting everything correctly. And it looks like it is. We can see the aperture opening and closing. I have an old Nikon EM. This is a pretty junky camera. It's not worth a lot of money. What it does have, though, is it has the same... Um, Aperture tab as my D750, 
So I'd rather ruin this camera than my uh, D750 by putting it on if it's not um, done correctly and jamming this in and ruining the mount on the camera. So I'm going to take the lens and I'm going to put it in and well, it doesn't seem, I don't think it's going to meter correctly. Uh, I put it in the wrong place. The 16 had worked on other um, lenses, but I guess with the uh, F2 it needs to be on the 11. Um, what I am interested in is see it's catching right on the edge of the two. So it appears that, you know, I have a little bit more space to go over here and it's looking like it's the same amount of space that's over there so I guess wrong I'm gonna have to disassemble and grind down more of the aperture ring to get it to work correctly so I'm happy I used the um, Nikon EM so that I didn't figure that out trying to mount it to my D750 so I'm gonna go ahead disassemble and grind some more and repeat all the steps and then I will come back Hopefully second time's the charm. There it is, the larger notch cut out. And now when I go to stick it on the Nikon EM, see that there's enough clearance for the little uh, notch or pin or whatever. Lock it into place and unfortunately it won't meter correctly, but it does fit, so it will be functional on the camera. It's just that the wrong aperture will show up through the viewfinder. So now that I know that it fits on this camera and I'm not going to ruin anything, I'm going to reattach this little piece. It's time for the second moment of truth. Run into a lot of problems with this lens. The small little piece that is for um, displaying the aperture information. On this lens, the uh, 50 millimeter F2 sticks out just a little bit and it would catch on the tab. The other two lenses that I did, it doesn't catch. So every lens is different, dramatically so, but now I can take it and I can mount it on the camera the aperture freely turns and I'm able to take it off. So despite having to do a couple steps twice and messing up the modification of the aperture ring, pretty happy with how things turned out. The lens will now function on the uh, D750. I can take it and I can manually focus and take pictures with it. Uh, and it was a nice learning experience. Again, the third lens I've done, if I come across uh, another one and I can pick it up, for an inexpensive price, I'll make another video of modifying that one and hopefully that one will go better. Thanks for watching.